President William Ruto has actually banned the importation of uh, wheat and maize just so to cushion the farmers against unscrupulous traders in the market. So the question is, finally, have we seen the nation responding to the cry of the farmer? That is our conversation today on Business Glide, your go-to point on matters public policy analysis, business and economics at large. I'm your truly Richard Wonjo. Always a pleasure to have you on board. Now to unpack this conversation and help me actually delve deeper into it is Haman Bon Manyora. He is Kenya's most sought after political analyst and Vegas' biggest export. Welcome on board, sir. Thank you. How are you? Wonderful. In a floral shirt. Yes. Royal purple, actually. Yes. Are you a dynasty? Of course. We've seen recent appointments there in <laughs> many who are expecting your name to be floated. No. Government spokesperson, perhaps. This is a small job. So how can I be a government sp How can I be lying on behalf of government? You call that line? Yeah. Speaking government's agenda? Saying, saying, saying untruth with a straight face. I think I can't do that. You can't do that. But job. these are small jobs. I'm beyond such a small things. There's only one job in this country now I can do which is to be the president of this country. These are the small jobs. <laughs> Talking of which, actually a number of coastal musicians have actually uh, come up with a song for your presidential bid and I'll be sharing it with you in a few. Yes. But people are actually warming up to that call of you being the yeah. president. Yeah. You're serious about it? I, yeah. yeah. The yeah. funding issue though? Um, what is this? People give me money. People? Because I want to save people from collapse. Maybe those people are you, our fans who've actually traveled from Zimbabwe to come and join yes, us. Today. Yes, 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 yes. And actually, uh, later on in the convention, we'll actually be giving them shout outs. We have our fans from Zimbabwe who've joined us yes, to yes. watch our live recording. And we normally thank you all for your support. Uh, we don't take it for granted. So, straight to the conversation. We're talking matters uh, the government trying to cushion the farmer. And uh, one of the avenues they're trying to cushion them is by banning the importation of wheat and maize because it's now the harvest season uh, across the country. But my question is. Recently, we saw the government actually uh, give a uh, green light to the importation of uh, duty-free yellow maize just so to lower the prices of hunger and subsequently lower the cost of living. Now we are seeing the, import, uh, the, the ban of the, on the importation. From where you sit as your footnote, would you say that maybe this is a case of trial and error and nothing to respond to market dynamics from the government side? This is a government without vision. Mm -hmm. This is a government that has no intention whatsoever mm -hmm. to do one good thing. Mm -hmm. Not even for the farmers, without whom we shall continue begging and looking useless in the international community. Mm -hmm. You cannot say today that we are going to have a bumper harvest, cut us of the fertilizer we gave subsidized, mm -hmm. and give figures that would indicate we have a surplus of about 15 million bags. Mm -hmm. And then the next time you are saying, even before a week is over, something like that, we are going to import yellow maize. Duty free. Then you say, oh, it's for, then people say, oh, it's for animals. Then before a week is over, you are saying, we are banning the importation of maize. This is, oh God, it is just, it is terrible. Do you consider a case of trial and it error? Is, it not, no, it is just, I don't know what to, English is a very difficult language. I can't find, I can't find a word to describe what I'm seeing. Bumper harvest. Importation of yellow maize, banning of importation, coming from a government that has facts <laughs> and figures and projections. Uh -huh. Because even if you are talking of animal feed, that bumper harvest produces a surplus. Mm -hmm. And that surplus is more than you need for the animal feed. Mm -hmm. And we too know, you give guys permits to employ duty-free yellow maize, they will bring white maize. Out of a thousand tons, a guy, uh, ten thousand tons, maybe eight, two thousand will be yellow, eight will be white maize, duty free. And then you are doing that at a time the farmer in this country, as we speak, I've been discussing this on TV an hour ago. <laughs> as we speak today, the average cost of a 90 kilogram bag of maize is 3,000 shillings, which is almost half the price of what it should be. Why? Because the government is always the biggest buyer and it sets the, the price. It has not done so. It has not moved. What does it mean? It leads to a situation where the farmer, depending wholly on this produce for everything, now falls prey to the middlemen who are having a field day buying maize at less than half the price of what it should be. Then the government will wake up from somewhere. Now we begin buying. Already the middleman has made a kill. Mm -hmm. And now that means the farmer who did 20 acres this year mm -hmm. is so frustrated 
so disappointed, has made such a serious losses, they can hardly do 10 acres the following year, which is next year. And then we complain of... So this is... We don't have leadership in this country. We've never had leadership. Zero leadership. From independence. There are people who just want to make money. They don't even... Sometimes, you know, we must be open. Even these farmers, most of them are from the president's backyard. Can't he even feel them? Can the president feel his own people in the North Rift? This, that's where maize comes from. Can't he feel his own people? Right now, farmers are giving maize at throwaway prices. The government is just quiet. It has not spoken. Unless it's speaking now as we speak. It hasn't spoken. And they know maize is being harvested. People have been harvesting. And the government is just quiet, strategically quiet, to allow the middlemen to pass. Go, go, take, take. Mm -hmm. Then the government wakes up from somewhere. And says it's going to fight cartels. Oh, it, is, it is painful being a Kenyan sometimes. Moving on swiftly, this same government, in a bid sort of to dry the tears of the farmers, it said, unlike the previous administration, it's going to actually subsidize on production and not consumption. This far, when you look at the market prices for inputs and also what we are seeing as the market uh, for, for, for the maize, in the ma would you actually say they have made substantial strides regards to drying the tears of the farm when it comes to the issue of uh, subsidi subsidizing? You see, the problem <laughs> of the farmers, some of them are very basic. <laughs> but top on the list of the problems bedeviling farming in this country is marketing. <laughs> we all know, every time we have a good crop harvest, be it horticultural cabbages, tomatoes, onions, whatever it is, there's always no market. You can always be sure a good harvest is a corresponding lack of market. And sometimes in one corner of the country people are starving, in another corner of the country people are throwing away food. You can't say this government. The work of government is to coordinate this. The work of government is to make sure there are markets. Government has a capacity to study trends, to look at early warning signs, advise farmers perhaps or not even what to grow this season or when to grow it, how to access markets. That's why governments are there. You get it? Given especially if you are talking about maize, maize, maize farming, the people who do it are, are peasant farmers. Ken, the Kenyan economy doesn't have large-scale maize growers, uh, maize, ma maize, maize plantations. No, these are ordinary people. Therefore, being ordinary, who do one acre, two, ten acres, there are people who need guidance and support from their government. If maize was under large-scale cultivation, you would you'd say these are people who know international climate in terms of uh, markets in terms of everything you need to market know. Market dynamics. But these are small villagers doing a quarter an acre, three acres, one acre. They need government to help them even navigate around the navigate around markets. Agricultural extension services. Yeah, and, and, and so even just loss, mm -hmm. post-harvest loss. Mm -hmm. If you go to the maize growing zones today, with these Nino rains coming and being there, in fact they are you'll be very disappointed. You'll see maize rotting on the farms. Because government cannot even support farmers with simple things like drying. Just dryers. Or storage facilities. Grain reserves. Yo, yes. So even before you talk of other things like subsidized fertilizer, and by the way, there's nothing like subsidized fertilizer. It was so much hyped. No. That's right. That's a business for people. I've challenged the government to come and challenge me to show them you can get fertilizer in Morocco, land it in Mombasa, cheaper than what you are calling subsidized. So where is the subsidy there? Go to Ukraine and buy fertilizer, land in Mombasa, cheaper than what the government is calling subsidized. Without even depending on donations? No, you market, you buy, cash. Nothing for free from Russia? Yeah, the only thing the government will do is not to levy taxes, duty, on the fertilizer, and it will be cheaper than the fertilizer they are calling subsidized. And that's it. So the call goes for, uh, I mean, far much beyond just subsidizing no. agriculture. So if so, there's one thing to subsidize, <laughs> it's an entirely different thing to make that an eating project. We also, fertilizer is coming. Why are you giving it to KNTC? Which KNTC in turn is giving to brokers, barons. I mean, I mean it is these are games. 
These are just simple games. Organized ground. Because if government wanted to buy subsidy to bring subsidized fertilizer, there's one thing government would do. Mm -hmm. Say, okay, fine. How many farmers have registered for free fertilizer, uh, for subsidized fertilizer in Vihiga County? Mm -hmm. So many. How many bags do we need? 40 million bags, 40,000 bags, 100,000 bags. Mm -hmm. We have landed fertilizer duty free. We have, government has bought it direct from Ukraine or whatever it is, direct or Morocco. It has landed in Mombasa. County governments use, because agriculture is devolved, mm -hmm. use a little funds you have to trans pick that tra fertilizer from Mombasa. From Mombasa, take it to your people. That fertilizer will cost 1,500 shillings. Down from 6,000. Ah, oh, come on. It's, it's all a joke. Very well then. But also in a, in, a, in a bid sort of to revitalize agriculture and boost food security, we've seen this government commit to construct over 100 dams within uh, even the next five years of its administration. And if you look at what happened recently in the water ministry, uh, when Alice Owome was at the helm, and uh, at the waterworks, uh, several parties pitting against each other and politicizing of the water subject, would you then say you do not have confidence even in the damming project <laughs> as a way to address food security? <laughs> Dams. Mm -hmm. I'm dying to know which dam has been constructed in this country that is serving Kenyans. I, I, I remember things like the Waka Dam, what? Kariba yeah, Dam. They have been there forever. Mm -hmm. Two things. Number one, when you hear the word dam, substitute it with corruption. When you hear dam, when you hear the word dam, substitute it with corruption. That is money. Nothing beyond that. Because it is billions. Billions and they never. The, the dams are never complete, and yet it is billions. A dam, if you look at dream dams like in Ethiopia and other countries, if we were ever to do that one, then we will use 10 trillion shillings. A dam is supposed to be a natural, a natural basin. A natural basin. A natural basin. You only study the soils and the rock formation. Topology. For porosity. <laughs> I say this is okay. And then you block some place. And then do a little embankment here and there. And then water flows and is retained. So it, there's no way it can cause the billions we hear. So it is a conduit for eating. That's the first thing. And the fact that they never get completed proves me right. The second thing which I think is even very important is that you cannot irrigate, you cannot in this country do irrigation for maize. Galana Kula, Luisa. What for? You can't. We are, God has given us very good rains, very fertile soils. Mm -hmm. You need to manage the land use in terms of uh, land ownership, land tenure, mm -hmm. land use. Idle land should be taxed, you know, that kind of thing. And then you avail, you make sure arable land is not held for speculative purposes and prestige mm -hmm. because you'll tax somebody. You can even say how many acres somebody can own as maximum. So once you do that, you will plant maize using rain in zones of this country. And the farmers who plant maize will tell you, they don't need any irrigation for maize. They have enough irrigation from heaven. Uh, you get what I'm saying? Sure. They, they support they need. Mm -hmm. Come up with a fertilizer plant in Kenya. Not the dams. Okay. Help farmers with extension services to come up with modern farming methods, modern husbandry, you know? Help farmers with harvest problems, storage problems, marketing problems, value addition problem, issues. You get it? No dams. I don't know what I'm saying. Sure. Farmers don't need. You can do irrigation for f flowers and other horticultural produce. F horticulture is what requires irrigation in this country not maize not wheat those ones will grow under natural conditions for now by the time we have a population of 200 250 million people we will begin irrigating the desert and semi-desert areas of this country but yeah. for now we don't even need we don't need that we don't need that now that you're talking about assholes, actually, yeah. we've seen our guest uh, actually in Kenya for benchmarking. And yes. trans, no, I mean, uh, transfer of knowledge actually yes. plays a crucial role in the thriving of any economy. 
would you then say first revitalize the fortunes of a Kenyan farmer and also to boost food security? Maybe there's need for us to constitute a robust uh, delegation, say to go for benchmarking in Egypt, Israel, uh, countries in the dry areas, but which uh, agriculture plays a central role in, in the livelihoods no, of the I people? I don't think it's not necessary because the <laughs> world today is so small. You don't need to leave your desk to, to understand the world. You don't need to do that? No. We have enough expertise. This, this is a country with uh, sufficient manpower, sufficient educated people. Mm -hmm. uh, some of our experts are, are, are renowned worldwide. What expert will you be going to look for in the field of uh, agriculture? Asal farming, which, which, and my friend, we have such a serious scholars, experts in range farming. Mm -hmm. eh? in dry land farming. Mm -hmm. You go to University of Nairobi, Apakabete, you run away. They are experts. So why would you go and look for another expert anywhere else? You don't need to go and benchmark no. on how to revitalize the fortunes of a Kenyan no. farm. Why, why would you go? You can go and pay, you can go and walk. Walking is allowed. Tourism. <laughs> 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 or at least we can send our ambassador to do that on our behalf. And our ambassadors should be doing those kind of things. Just that. Just that. But there are people <laughs> who, because of their stage of, of development, mm -hmm. they may need to travel and see how other people are doing. I think Kenya is beyond that. All right. We are on top of the range in, in almost every area. There isn't an area I'm convinced. That's why I say we should automatically ban any, any international travel. President Manyora will ban all international, all, I underline the word all and in capital letter. You will not use government money, even one shilling, to say you are going to Egypt. <laughs> the ambassador there will tell us, well, if, there, if there's a conference, you'll attend on our behalf. No huge size trade delegations. Forget about huge, not even one person. Even the president will travel after very serious considerations. Do you think there'll be a Kenyan who will want to, to work under your government? Okay, many Kenyans will want. These crooks, I'll send them home, all of them. But there will be Kenyans who will want to serve their country. <laughs> Not these crooks who are used to free money. <laughs> well, there you have it. That, is, that has, actually, has actually been our conversation today on Business Glide Talking Matters Agriculture with a special bias on maize farming and issues the government is trying to address in that particular front just so to dry the tears of a Kenyan farmer. Time now for Fun of the Week and it is this amazing duo who have actually come all the way from Zimbabwe to watch our live recording. Of course, they have other businesses that they are conducting here in Kenya, but it is our distinguished honor to actually uh, host them today. And Rakim, if we might get a shot of them. Prof, here yes. are your guests. Thank you very much. Gentlemen from Zimbabwe, the land of uh, Comrade Bob. Thank you very much. Enjoy your stay in Kenya. We hope you benefit from the stay and pass our greetings. Thank you. Well, Asante Nisana for coming through for us uh, in many, many ways. And uh, we also extend the same to you who is watching us from wherever you are. Thank you for always supporting this uh, company that is Nairobi Review. And continue watching our other productions. That is uh, Jadiel Kabiru with his show, Evan Sokini and Mundia Gitau. Up next on your screen is the Business Glide African Proverb of the Day. <laughs>